Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez. I often think I am responsible for some of the little terms that I use. Boy, was I wrong. I thought I invented the term domino effect, meaning the continual need to change a cartridge. One goes low or empty, you replace it with a new one, and then the printer performs a purge cycle, which it needs to do, and then the next card that was almost empty is now empty and you just get into this perpetual changing of cartridges and every time you do so you develop another ink purge which then throws more ink away we won't even get into the subject of waste ink pads but you're just basically throwing ink away now what about my system that i use on the Canon printers, for instance, I refilled a whole set. I have another one on standby. I put that set into the cart. I put that set into the printer. Begin to print. One cart goes slow. I remove that set and I replace it with a refilled full set. And then I take that set out. I wait till I have some time. I reset all of the carts and top every one of them off. And I'm still printing. I'm printing with the other new set, maybe for another month or so before one card goes low again. And then I repeat the process. And it's a perpetual process. Instead of changing one card at a time and developing, for example, on the Pro 100 would be eight purge cycles per complete card set if you do individual cards. Well, that obviously develops a lot of wasting, even though third-party inks are cheap I don't want to waste them so but it never occurred to me what would happen I'm eating a cookie it never occurred to me what would happen if an individual was using nothing but OEM inks and I thought that would be horrible how would you handle such a thing well apparently wiser heads have come up with a solution and when did that occur like 2010 okay for you guys that don't know www.printerknowledge one word dot com it's a printer forum it's really um, moderated by an Irish guy from Ireland of course he goes by the name of the hat and he is a leprechaun he has a little you know Four leaf clover here, three leaf clover. And basically, he is the moderator. The owner of the channel actually lives in the United States, I believe. But he really doesn't stick his head into the uh, handling of the forum at all. And he lets the hat or Brian, as we, those, who, those of us who love him, call him Brian. And like King Brian the leprechaun. And so on. Anyway, he goes on to say, on June 18, 2010, and why do I go back this far? I don't know, I must be bored sometimes. But I do go back this far sometimes, and I look up interesting posts that are still relevant to 2016. And it's entitled, The Domino Effect on Pro 9500s, meaning Canons, Pro 10s for OEM Inc. users. And there are some of you out there that are professional photographers who are selling their prints. And as I always recommend, you cannot use third-party inks when you are selling your prints. At least at, that's my philosophy and that's just my, what my belief is. If you're going to sell your prints, you need to give your customer who is paying you good money the best ink possible. Okay, So OEM is king when it comes to that. If you're just doing uh, home printing like I do as a hobby and I give away prints. I occasionally sell a print to someone, but I tell them that they were printed with third-party inks and give them a guarantee under glass of about 10 years. By that point, they have moved and you know the print disappears. But you know, I always promise to replace the print if it indeed fails on them. So, But OEM, that's the guarantee that you have to give all your customers. So anyway, that's another subject. 
this is quite interesting. And remember, keep in mind, <coughs> excuse me, keep in mind this is only for OEM ink users. And this applies to the Pro 9500 and the Pro 10. Why? Because those cartridges contain internal ink bags. They can be used till empty, not like the sponge carts that need to be refilled before they start drawing ink out of the sponge. In other words, once they hit low, that means that the liquid side of the cartridge body is empty of liquid ink and you need to fill it at that point so that you do not alter the saturation levels of the sponge by continuing to print. So with these carts that have internal ink bags, you can print until they're bone dry. As long as the chips are reporting correctly, you should not have any problems. So here we go. <clears throat> I wish I could do this with a leprechaun accent, a good old Irish accent, but I cannot. I'm a Spaniard and I just don't know how to do that accent. Those of you that choose to use OEM inks are at a terrible disadvantage when it comes to changing their empty cartridges for a new one. Why, you may ask? And the user tends to wait till the cartridge is declared completely empty in an attempt to use up all of the ink and then they think that they are being very economical and prudent by using every drop of this expensive OEM liquid. Well, why not? That's what I would do. I would use my expensive OEM liquid ink till the darn thing is bone dry. Why not? He's about to explain to us why that should not be done. This effort on their part seems to make perfect sense till you consider what, and then he, in brackets, the third party ink users commonly called the dreaded domino factor. I call it effect. Okay, he calls it factor, I call it effect. So maybe I do have claim to my way of describing the problem. And how can o, an OEM user stop this wasteful practice that Canon employs to squeeze the most loyal OEM ink users even more? The OEM user replaces the one empty cartridge at a time, which the machine then duly responds by automatically doing a maintenance cleaning cycle, I call it a purge cycle, that then can cause another cartridge to become empty. And so the user now replaces that cartridge as well, only to find that they have unwittingly entered, unwittingly entered the domino syndrome. Da 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 which is, as we know, wastes an enormous and awful lot of expensive ink. Up till now, it didn't seem possible to prevent this, but with a bit of prudence and new practice, the OEM user can also employ the same techniques that refillers use to get out of the twilight zone of waste ink production. And it goes somewhat like this. Now, you got to really think about this. When they get the first sign of a low ink cartridge marked as yellow. See, when your cartridge reaches low on a Pro 10 or a Pro 9500, and we'll talk about how we can do this on the Pro 1 as well, if you are a strict OEM user, which I am not for the Pro 1, of course. So you get to the low ink cartridge warning marked in yellow, they should then immediately change that particular cartridge and any other cartridge that is on or below half full. Wow, okay. So that's scary, right? Right off the bat, that scares you. But remember, you are an OEM user. You are buying cartridges because you are selling your prints. Cartridges that are on or below half full marked in red with a nice fresh new cartridge or cartridges. Now this is where the savings come in because we know that a new cartridge weighs in at approximately 34 grams. That applies to the Pro 10 and the 9500. Why? The cartridge bodies are identical, only the chips are different. So if you reset the used cartridges and weigh them and write in detail the on a chart similar to the one below, and it shows you an example of that, Keep them safe for use at a later date, not forgetting to fit the orange clip back onto the bottom 
of the cartridge to keep the ink fresh. When you have accumulated several sets of used cartridges, you can then reuse the remaining ink in each cartridge to refill as many of the other partially filled cartridges as possible. By employing this practice, you will have managed to save quite a lot of ink that would otherwise have been wasted ink. And then it just goes to show you a facsimile of the ink level indicator and the ones that are yellow, the ones that are red. So you would change all of the ones that are yellow and all of the ones that are reaching empty or already have reached empty and have a red indicator on them. So basically this is what he's doing. Let me finish up real quick here. So to take this speculation out of how much ink is wasted and how often, then fit a waste ink potty. He's Irish. He means an external ink bottle to catch the waste. And by God, he's the only one I know that can know, knows how to do that properly on a Canon printer. I wish I was living next door to this guy. It acts as an excellent ink monitoring system. And that is, if you really want to know how much ink is generated during these purge cycles. All right, so here's the, here's the theory behind this practice. If you use your inks till empty and then change one cartridge, you will then develop across the board ink purge that will waste a number of ml per cartridge, which just gets thrown away. If you change not only the low one or the empty one, but all of the other ones that are reaching that condition and replace them with full ones, then you have maybe replaced as many as four cartridges possibly, maybe five, and you're putting them aside and you know exactly how much ink they have left because you know that they weigh 33 point something at full in about 15 empty. So then you calculate the difference and you know how much ink is left in them. And that ink can easily be aspirated and then used to refill other cartridges you've been collecting. So you reset them, there's a resetter for them, you reset them, you use your OEM ink that still remains in those other cards and refill those cards with that ink. And of course, you will be also buying OEM cards as replacements, but you will be also using that ink that would normally go to waste. It's a lot of work to do that, but if you're really diligent, you can do that in greatly reduce the amount of waste you generate by doing the single card change, even if you are using OEM. With my 600 PGI 29 cards that I received up to now, I was able to extract enough ink to actually fill up about three sets of maybe more, about four full sets of OEM cards. And that is ink that was going to be not only thrown out and because the university that has this printing lab was exchanging one card at a time. They were developing purge cycles after every single um, card change and ink was being thrown away. And so, ah, yeah, it's a lot of work, but it does make sense. And it is an option for people who are just using only OEM. They have no other option because they are a commercial lab and they are selling the prints. So now, and remember this is, this is July, 2000, Six, I'm sorry. This is like 10 years ago when this was brought up. So yeah, see, now it's 10 years later. We're still suffering from the same problems that they were experiencing or discovering 10 years ago. So Michael Lee from Precision Colors, I didn't even know who this guy was back then. He goes as Mickling, M-I-K-L-I-N-G. As this, all of this is true. And then he says, consider this, the irony that the user who knows how to harvest ink and refill the tanks would likely be refilling in the first place. If there's ever a printer to break into refilling with, those two printers are the ones that you should use. And so they are the easiest printer whose cart I should say, whose cartridges are the easiest to refill. And resetting is available for the both. And so 
at this point, even if you're not using OEM inks, if you're using, say, for instance, Mike, Michael Lee's uh, own inks, you can do this practice as soon as one goes low. In this case, because you are actually controlling the ink. You're refilling your own cards with your own ink. Yes, as soon as one goes low, remove that set, and you have a second set waiting. You must have that second set waiting. Replace that second set. You kick back, start printing. Maybe three, four weeks later, you will need to replace that uh, set again. And you're basically just replacing the one that's low, and the rest are going to be at different levels. You're just topping them off. They may only take five, six, seven, eight, nine ml of ink to top them off instead of a whole load of 15 ml. So that works. It works wonderfully. It has been working for me for all of my printers. At this point, I cannot do that on my Pro One because the chips are not resettable. So with that particular printer, I'm forced to exchange one card at a time. But that should not be much of a problem as that will not happen too often. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this little flashback in time. I know I did. And I'm going to start looking at some of those old, old, old nuggets of information that were being thrown out there 10, 13, 14, 15 years ago. They were still around. They were called differently, but they were still around. These people have been doing this much longer than I have. And by the way, people, if you want to join a group that is by far the most expert canon oriented group that's the one to join www.printerknowledge.com they are the canon experts specifically the hat the hat has done just about everything you could imagine with canon printers every aspect of of oem use refilling hacking breaking modifying everything so he is the man and i actually go to him for quite a lot of advice since i only began using canon printers probably about two years ago i started with a pro 100 and that has been my experience only two years worth of uh, canon use so thanks once again i hope you enjoyed this little uh, flashback and so please subscribe share and like and until the next time happy printing everyone bye bye i'm gonna go upstairs and cook one heck of a gourmet dish for my wife and myself we deserve it and so now we're gonna kick back and watch some telly all right bye bye everyone